Hey, how's it going? Ben here. Great to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to be talking about living in Thailand again. This is going to be a part of the series I'm doing about um, my experience living and teaching English here in Thailand. So in some of the previous videos, we've spoken about like what you can expect in terms of salary. And I thought it would be worthwhile uh, kind of looking at the cost of living for Thailand. So this video is going to be all about the cost of living in Thailand. I'm going to show you um, some sort of charts online that detail the cost of living in Thailand. I'm going to talk a little bit about how they compare to um, what I've experienced here and where I may have a different opinion uh, to those things that are online. I'll then give you kind of a breakdown of what I spend and some examples of the things that I use uh, on a regular basis and my expenses and that kind of thing. So we're going to have a real kind of deep dive into uh, the expenses and costs of living uh, as an English teacher here in Thailand. The reason why I'm making this video is because I think if you look at kind of teaching jobs or any other type of job here or elsewhere in Southeast Asia, the thing that might strike you the most is the low salary when you convert that salary into dollars, pounds or euros. Now it is true you are probably going to be taking a pay cut if you decide to take a job like teaching English here in Thailand and move from like a Western country. However, that doesn't tell the full story because the cost of living is um, much less here and maybe that will work out better for you. Before I moved here, I was renting a house in the UK. There was four of us in one house. We essentially were renting one room each. Uh, we had a living room and a kitchen and that kind of thing, only one shared bathroom. And that was costing me 500 pounds per month. It was a massive amount. I can get my own condo, my own small house out here for around 100 pounds. So, some of the things like eating out, travel, uh, definitely rent, rent's a massive one and much, much cheaper in Thailand. And although you may be making less money, uh, you may find that your expenses are so much less that it actually makes a better situation for yourself. This is all going to be down to personal preference and personal expectations. So this is my two cents and maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. And without further ado, let's uh, get into it. Okay, so this is um, my video on the cost of living in Thailand. So first up is um, a link to a website. So the cost of living, this is like kind of one of the first websites I found online uh, after a Google search for cost of living in Thailand. This is pretty good and it broke down sort of the main expenses and all that kind of thing, what you can expect. I'm going to leave a link to this website uh, in the description of this video so you can go there and check it out for yourself. Then following content, so I've taken a few uh, pages from this um, website and we're going to go through it and have a look at what it said online and whether I agree, whether I disagree and what I found to be uh, the case here. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to that. So the following has been taken from www.expatistan.com. So yeah, maybe um, I've read that wrong, but yeah, I guess expats. So it's like uh, people who are expatriates. Uh, living abroad. So that is the website and I'll leave a link like I said in the description to that website um, and this is where I found this. Okay so this is a breakdown of kind of expenses you will find um, here in Thailand. So this is what they've listed on their website at least. Anyway so I thought we could have a look through some of these and I can give you kind of my take on what's written on this site so or on some of this information. So first up um, is food um, and the first one is basic lunchtime menu including a drink in the business district. So I'm not really sure what that means but I guess that would be relevant if you're living in a city like Bangkok or Pattaya perhaps, maybe even Chiang Mai. However, if you're living outside of one of those main hubs, uh, which I do and most people out here teaching English probably do as well, then this is a little bit um, different obviously you know you, you can get a meal much cheaper than that here where I am currently and I, I will get into that later so I'll show you my actual expenses or some of them later but for the purposes of the website and this is probably true in um, certain districts in Bangkok this is definitely true so for um, your basic lunchtime menu including a drink they're saying it's 111 Thai baht and that is um, three dollars and 22 cents so it is pretty cheap already, uh, especially if you're coming from like Europe, this probably seems very, very cheap for a lunchtime meal. And then what I'm telling you is you, if that's probably kind of the average for areas like Bangkok, but and not everywhere in Bangkok, you can find cheap spots in Bangkok as well, lots of street food, that kind of thing. But that is quite high for areas elsewhere. So um, yeah, 
So food, like I said, food is very cheap. Uh, that's a massive thing for me, massive uh, saving on expenses. A combo meal in fast food restaurants, Big Mac meal or similar. Um, so yeah, they're actually saying 217 baht, around $6. And yeah, I think that's about right. Uh, when I say food is cheaper here in Thailand, I don't include fast food. Um, fast food, especially like the foreign kind of brands like KFC, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, those kind of things, they have pretty similar prices to the prices you will find in your home country, most likely. That's at least seems to be the case for me. I don't know if that's 100% true. I don't know if they're 100% accurate. I can't really remember how much a Big Mac cost uh, back in the UK, but I think it's pretty similar. The cost of fast food seems much higher here. So for fast food, yeah, you're not gonna be saving that much money, but um, I mean, hopefully you don't eat it too often anyway. Um, also on here, so we've got a litre of milk, uh, one quart um, of whole fat milk, and that's being put down as 52 baht or $1.52 pretty much the same I think, there's not much difference in the price of milk. Uh, 12 eggs large, we've got 87 baht, $2.53. Uh, cheese, <laughs> 500 grams of local cheese, and that's 323 baht on $9. Now I will say this, uh, cheese does seem to be more expensive out here. Um, things like cheese and yogurt seem to be way more expensive, especially if you want like mozzarella or cheddar cheese. Uh, I don't know why that is. I think there's less cows in Thailand, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, maybe there's a higher price on dairy products. Um, perhaps, I definitely think that is true for cheese. Cheese seems pretty expensive whenever I've uh, wanted to get some. Okay, next up is beer. So we've got 0.5 liters or 16 ounces of domestic beer in the supermarket. So domestic beers here in Thailand, you've got Leo and Chang, and then also Heineken's produced here. So they're kind of the big three beers. <laughs> you get in Thailand, weirdly enough. And yeah, they're about 59 baht for that amount, or $1.70. You're not going to notice this, a massive price difference again in beer, actually. I think beer is pretty highly regulated everywhere in the world, so it's kind of similar. I know there are certain places where it's much cheaper. Thailand isn't really one of those places. Beer is kind of expensive. And it's even more expensive if you're going to be drinking sort of imported uh, liquors because there's like a high importation taxes on many things here as well. So if you want it like a gin and tonic, that kind of thing, they can be pretty pricey. Um, so yeah, beer is not that much cheaper, but if you're buying local beers, it's not that expensive. Also, uh, I'm bred for two people for one day. I have no idea how much that would be, <laughs> um, but they've yeah, listed that as um, 44 baht or $1.26. Yeah, so um, that's food. Let's move on to housing. And this is probably the area where I have kind of a very different experience personally to what is listed on this site. So let's um, have a look at some of that. So the first thing that is kind of uh, documented here is monthly rent for an 85 meters squared uh, furnished accommodation in an expensive area. Now, I don't really have a good idea in my head what that would mean. However, I will say this, that that's a massive price. So 57,282 baht, uh, 1,663 US dollars um, per month. Now, what that could buy you would be an amazing place. Um, so when I was staying on the island of Koh Samui, very popular holiday destination, you've probably heard of it. Um, there were these luxury villas with pools, uh, views of the island, uh, you know, like multiple bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, uh, and you can rent them out for a short time. Especially if you're all clubbing together, it can maybe be a reasonable price. I think you get probably one of those types of things for that amount of money. That's a massive amount of money for Thailand. You can legit get like a four bedroomed house, townhouse for much less than that. So I don't know what this is gonna pay for you, but that is really, really, really top tier. Uh, so that's nothing you know, That's nothing like the average accommodation. That's nothing like a condo rental. That's not at all like a small townhouse rental. Uh, so yeah, I don't really know what that is, but that's a massive amount of money. Um, I've never really seen anything that expensive, although maybe I've seen like the luxury villas in the Coast of Mary Hillside, so maybe they are that price. I don't know. But that yeah, that isn't the norm at all for out here, um, just so you know. Uh, so yeah, we're going to skip all that really expensive stuff. A lot of that seems way off the mark to me. Maybe it's just in areas I don't look. Maybe it's in like Bangkok, Pattaya, Chiang Mai, those kind of really top areas. However, I do know people who live in a few of those areas and they don't pay anything like that as well. So yeah, maybe it's just the real top creme de la creme 
of uh, accommodation here. Maybe that's the legit, like, you know, millionaires kind of pads. Uh, so, yeah, not I can't really relate to that, and I don't think it's really worth going into. I don't think many of you will relate to that. Also, not to sound grim, maybe that's just reality, though. I legit don't think I'll ever be able to afford a house like that anyway, so I'm in the same group. But next, we have monthly rent for a 45 meter squared. Again, furnished studio in normal area. So, um, I don't really have a good idea of what that would look like, that kind of thing. But it's being listed for 11,347 Thai baht or 329 US dollars um, per month. Now that is closer to reality. If you're going to be staying in a modern condo complex in an area like Phuket, Samui, I saw some condos for about that price, maybe like two rooms, but the condos are really nice, got a pool and a gym. So you're going to get a lot for that. Same in Bangkok, I think you could probably get like a decent condo um, with like pool, gym, facilities, all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to be paying that, again, that's actually quite high, especially if you're not in a major city. Um, but yeah, that would be like a, a nice furnished condo with great facilities. You could get that for that price, which is pretty good, right? And you can even get them a little bit cheaper. Um, when I was staying in Samir, I was in a condo complex. It was only one room. I, I was paying 8,000 um, Thai baht for that, uh, so a bit cheaper. And I still had a pool, sea view, the lot. It was amazing. So for that extra, you would probably get an extra room, which would be great. If you're looking at like a, just a very simple one room sort of condo, uh, in a less populated area. I mean, you can get them for half that price. You can get 4,000, 5,000 Thai baht for a furnished one room condo in a lot of areas in Thailand. You can get cheaper than that as well, by the way. Um, but yeah, if you want a furnished one uh, with like kind of air conditioning, all that kind of stuff, TV, then you could probably be paying around four to 5,000 Thai baht, which is around 100 US, 130 US dollars, let's say. Uh, so a bit over $100 would get you a reasonably good condo. That's why I think this list is a little bit um, off in this area because this one says furnished condo in a normal area. I would call a normal area some, somewhere out of Bangkok, somewhere not on, in one of the sort of tourist traps. That's probably the right price for a condo in a hotly um, populated tourist area outside a normal area, what I would call a normal area. Maybe they don't. I'd say you're going to look at halving that if you're okay with a slightly more basic room. And like I say, you can, you can go cheaper than what I said for unfurnished, um, unair conditioned rooms. But yeah, that's just somewhere <laughs> I need air conditioning. So I've never paid less than around four, four and a half, I'd say is like the less I've paid for like a small condo or a small townhouse. But it is doable. It's definitely findable. Uh, so yeah, bear in mind that housing can be much cheaper than this in my experience especially if you're outside of those major cities. All right. Uh, so yeah, next up, utilities, one month heating, electricity, gas. Uh, you're probably only gonna be getting electricity. I don't see many houses here with gas supply. Uh, so that's listed at 1,294 baht, around 38 US dollars. I'd say that's about bang on. Uh, I pay roughly that, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe, but over a thousand uh, Thai baht, uh, so about 30 US dollars, I think I pay. I have the air conditioning on at night. I'm usually working in the day. I have a TV, aircon in the evening and at night. Um, so yeah, that is about my electricity. So if you're gonna be similar, if you're gonna be out in the day, have your aircon on in the evening and night, TV, all that kind of good stuff, you're probably gonna be paying around a thousand or around 30 US dollars uh, per month for your electricity. Once again, this does vary. It also can be more expensive in condominiums. Uh, they sometimes have different deals. They sometimes have like generators, backup generators and all that kind of stuff. So it can be more reliable, but it sometimes comes at a higher cost um, if you're doing that. Okay, so yeah, that's something to bear in mind. So next up is internet, eight megabytes per second for one month. That's listed at 532 Thai bar or $15. Once again, that's pretty much exactly what I pay. I think I pay 500 baht for my Wi-Fi at home. Uh, so yeah, that's probably what you'll be paying for your internet if you need Wi-Fi. And I imagine you probably will need Wi-Fi as it is 2022. Um, all right, so yeah, that's kind of housing, uh, utilities, bills, that kind of stuff. So let's move on. Next one, we've got some clothes. All right, so I thought this might be interesting to look at, maybe not that relevant. We actually have clothes and transportation on this page. Uh, so let's start with clothes. Listed is one pair of jeans, Levi's 501 or similar, listed at um, 2,044 baht or uh, 59 US dollars. Yeah, I've actually 
do wear Levi's <laughs> and you can, they are about that price in the shop. Oftentimes here in Thailand, you'll get promotions. So maybe you can get like half price sometimes. So yeah, definitely look out for the promotions. You get a massive discount at times. And that's kind of similar price, I think, to um, sort of Western countries. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper, actually. Uh, I think Levi's are quite expensive. Back in the UK, they may be more expensive than that. Come to think of it. Um, so yeah, you may be saving a little bit of money there. If you're not interested in brands, if you don't mind cheaper alternatives, you can get clothes, jeans, much, much, much cheaper than that out here. But if you're gonna be looking for like Levi's, branded clothing, Nike, Adidas, that kind of stuff, then you are gonna have to pay quite a lot uh, for those items here. Similar prices to you would back home. It's if you're looking for non-branded stuff, that's when you can get really, really cheap stuff. Next up, one pair of sports shoes. Nike, Adidas are equivalent. So like I said, those brands are kind of still pretty expensive out here. You're talking 2,939 baht, around 85 US dollars. Now I do have a pair of Nike um, running shoes that I bought out here. They definitely weren't that much. I think they're about 1,500. So a bit less, maybe I have a cheaper taste. Um, but yeah, you, you, you again, I think shoes, I think Nike running shoes, I think like Adidas trainers, I think they're gonna be kind of a similar price to your expecting. I don't think you're gonna get a massive discount on those types of brands, those types of global brands. Their prices seem pretty consistent. Okay, next is transportation, and this may be more, much more relevant to you. You'll probably be having to pay um, transportation. Uh, and first is listed is buying a car. So this is for a Volkswagen Golf 1.4 um, or equivalent with no extras, brand new. That's around 900, 903. 605,000 Thai baht or 26,228 US dollars. Um, yeah, so that's again, if you're talking about like these brands of cars, the global brands of cars, also cars are quite expensive out here. There's a much bigger motorcycle market, uh, especially when you're looking at second hand. Second hand cars seem to hold much higher value out here. And um, there's much less cars on the road, I think, much more motorcycles. Motorcycles are much cheaper. Cars seem to be expensive, um, that's my kind of two cents, what I've seen out here anyway. But yeah, I don't think you're gonna be uh, saving any money buying a car, uh, definitely not. But motorcycle, yes, there's an absolutely flooded, uh, saturated motorcycle market. You can get a really cheap motorcycle secondhand. So that is probably why most people ride motorcycles, I would imagine. Cars are still very expensive. Um, one thing you probably will notice a discount on is gas running your vehicle. Right now, gas prices are up they're they're quite a bit more expensive than listed here right now a few things going on in the world <laughs> that may be causing that i don't know if they're going back down once those things blow over however gas is still much cheaper i think well it's much cheaper than it is in the uk maybe it's much cheaper than where you are and um, so gas one liter or a quarter gallon of gas is 34 thai baht or 99 cents that's not true anymore uh, i think it's about 42 thai baht for a liter of gas right now so it is quite a bit up uh, on that um, sort of listed price. However, it's still much cheaper than it is for me in the UK anyway. Uh, and finally, uh, we have something that confused me a little bit, but maybe this is because I've never lived in Bangkok. Uh, monthly ticket for public transport. I've never seen like monthly tickets for transport, but, uh, and also if you're outside of Bangkok, I don't know what, how well um, your city will have kind of public transport. Uh, you'll probably find much more kind of taxis, motorcycle taxis, tuk-tuks, uh, song towers instead of buses. So you, you maybe won't be able to commute too easily on public transport. You may be much more inclined to rent or buy a motorcycle. I know I was, but if I was living in Bangkok, I'd definitely use a SkyTrain, that kind of thing. So maybe that is for people living in Bangkok, which I've never done, so I can't really comment on too much. So this is the last of the information we'll look at from the website, but I think this is a worthwhile viewing. So uh, let's jump over and have a look at entertainment. So. Basic dinner out um, for two in a neighborhood pub, uh, 697 Thai baht or 20 US dollars. Yeah, I think that's about right. If you're gonna go to a pub, get a few drinks and have some food, you're probably looking at spending around that. Uh, two tickets to the movie, um, you're looking at 393 baht or 11 US dollars, um, probably about right. One cocktail drink in downtown club, 300 baht or $9. Yeah, if you're gonna get a cocktail, uh, like in the touristy area or in a sort of city center, you're probably gonna be spending around that price. Like I said, alcohol isn't really that much cheaper here in Thailand. That may surprise you, but it's just not, I don't think it is that much anyway. Um, so yeah, cocktails are pretty pricey, as they are everywhere. Cappuccino in expat area of the city. 
um, 85 tie bar or $2.46. Now I think that is a little bit high. Um, I'm not too sure what they mean in expat area of the city. I don't think cappuccinos are ever more than around 60 tie bar. And um, that's kind of the standard price. Even if you go to like a big chain store, where there's a chain coffee shop called Cafe Amazon out here, they do pretty good coffee. That's about 60 baht for a um, cappuccino, iced or hot. So yeah, I think that's a little bit overpriced, but not that much. So <laughs> yeah, you can actually probably get your coffee a little bit cheaper than that. Um, so yeah, next up, one beer in a neighborhood pub. Uh, 89 baht, probably about right, I'd say. Uh, or $2.59. Uh, one minute of prepaid mobile tariff, no discount or plans. So it's listed here as one Thai bar, 171. So that'd be one bar 71 satang. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's five cents in American money. I have no idea if that's correct. I have a monthly package. I actually bought my phone and I'm using like a contract. So I'm paying for the phone and like my monthly bills of uh, calls, text and uh, internet data. So I'm not too sure. Um, about if that is the correct price for a call. Also, you probably won't be paying for calls. I think if you're gonna be buying like a SIM only kind of uh, monthly package of a lot of data, a lot of minutes, I think you can probably get a decent one for about 500 type baht. So uh, yeah, probably be more likely to buy that if you're getting a SIM card than sort of pay. I, I imagine uh, maybe you're not. But yeah, you can get pretty decent sort of monthly, weekly packages um, from a lot of the major networks out of here. Out here. So that would be something to look into, um, definitely. Uh, one month of gym membership in a business district, 1,703 baht or 49 US dollars. Yeah, I think that's about bang on. Uh, yeah, you can get more, it depends, gyms. Obviously you can get really cheap gyms with uh, less new equipment. You can get really expensive gyms with a lot of facilities. I think for that price, you'd be at near the top end of the gyms. Uh, if you're paying almost 2,000 Thai baht per month, you'd probably get a pretty nice gym, maybe with a sauna, maybe with a lot of new equipment and classes, that kind of thing. So yeah, you could probably get a decent gym for that price as well. I think that's kind of bang on. And if you're a smoker, one pack of Marlboro cigarettes, 135 baht, $3.93. I don't know about that either. And that is all the information I've taken from the website. And next we're gonna look at what I actually spent. So I've kind of made a breakdown and then I'm gonna list some things and I'm gonna list the actual prices of what I pay, of what my costs and expenses are living here in Thailand. Okay, so first off, I made a little pie chart um, and I broke down kind of it into sort of um, percentages. So this is from my salary. I'm an English teacher. Maybe you're planning to come and live as an English teacher. This is kind of for the basic or average English teaching salary. This is what I, I believe my salary breaks down to. So rent takes up about 15% of my salary, my monthly salary. Food and drink, probably about 30%. That's a little bit hard to calculate and varies quite a bit, but yeah, I'd say roughly 30% of my salary. Transportation, only 6%. I already own a motorcycle, so I don't actually have to pay rent on a motorcycle. I'm just paying for the gas and the odd um, sort of fix. So yeah, my transportation fees are very low. Um, that might be different for you. Maybe you're paying rent for a, a motorcycle, so maybe it'll be a bit more than that, but it won't be too much more than that, I wouldn't have thought. Entertainment, about 20%. I don't get up to too much, but I do like to go out now and then. I'm probably only going out like uh, two times a month maximum, so I don't really go out every week or anything like that. So maybe you need more than that. Maybe your circumstances are different to mine. And that leaves me with about 39% of my salary as savings. And that is the reason why, when I said the salary of a potential job here or in certain other areas, in sort of Southeast Asia specifically is what I'm talking about from my experience. The salary alone doesn't tell the full story because maybe you can save a higher percentage of your wage because your expenses are much less. And that's what I kind of wanted to illuminate in this video. So that's how it kind of breaks down in terms of percentages. Next, I'm gonna go through a list of, <laughs> of all my expenses in case you're interested in that. Okay, so we'll do that now. Um, so over here, I've made a little bit of a chart. And the first thing I've put on this chart is my rent. So my rent currently is 135 US dollars. It's 4,500 Thai baht, 135 US dollars per month. For a small house um, I have here, it's like a small townhouse. It's actually a bungalow, there's only one floor. I have a living room, a bedroom. I have a garage area, an area, a gated area to park my motorcycle. I have a garden area, I have a bathroom. In the garden area is like a kitchenette area. So yeah, it does the job for me. 
Um, so yeah, I've actually got a picture of my house as well I can show you. So this is my house. This is my small bungalow. It's a terrace. I've got neighbor either side. Um, so yeah, and I'm paying 4,500 Thai baht or 135 US dollars per month for the house. I live in kind of a small city, a lesser known city. So maybe that's why that is the price. But I think you can find a place, a, a small condo or a small house for around that price here in Thailand quite easily. They seem to be readily available at that kind of price point as well. So yeah, that's my rent. Um, next up, electricity. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, so yeah, I have quite a small house. Um, I have the aircon on every night, uh, a TV on in the evening, all that kind of stuff. So I pay $30 um, per month pretty much. It's, it's kind of pretty much flat rate. It's not a flat rate, but it seems like one. It's always around $30 US dollars per month or a thousand Thai baht per month. Um, water, my water fee is very low again. And in fact, I use quite a lot of water. I have my own washing machine, so that bumps up the price. I have a lot of um, kind of plants growing in the garden that I water daily. And I'm still only paying $3 um, per month for my water. You can't drink that water. Um, maybe you can in your country, you can in the UK. You can't drink the tap water here, so I have to buy water on top of that. But in terms of like the utility for the house, my water bill is typically around $3 per month. So yeah, water is pretty cheap here. But like I say, you can't drink it or anything like that. Motorcycle rental. Okay, so this is kind of what I did used to rent a motorcycle when I first moved out here. I did rent one for a while. Now I've bought one, so I don't have to pay motorcycle rental anymore. So that does also mean I'm not kind of 100% on how much motorcycle rental is right now. This is something else that varies massively. Once again, if you're in a highly touristy area, renting a motorcycle is going to be much more expensive. However, um, if you're living in a smaller kind of city, I'd also ask for longer term plans if you are renting a motorcycle, even in the touristy areas, it may give you a better deal. But if I'm not mistaken, motorcycle rental is probably around 2,000 baht per month. It used to be a few years ago when I was renting. And um, so yeah, that's around $58 per month for a motorcycle. Just to give you an idea, uh, you could rent this kind of bike for that price. I didn't rent this type of bike. However, this is kind of a similar to the type of bike that you're going to rent for around 2,000 Thai baht or 58 US dollars. Sort of a small scooter type of bike. This is my bike, but like I said, I bought this bike. I don't rent it. However, you can rent similar bikes for around 2,000 baht or 58 US dollars. I'm pretty sure of that anyway. So yeah, that's my motorcycle. Motorcycle gas, I pay around 14 US dollars per month for gas. Uh, I don't drive a great deal, however, I do commute to work and back, do go to the odd place at the weekend. So yeah, motorcycle gas, filling up your bike is pretty cheap. Gas isn't, you don't need that much gas for your motorcycle. That's probably one of the best things about running a motorcycle. It is pretty cheap, especially in terms of gas. Um, so yeah, $14 for gas. Food and drink, I estimate I spend around two, uh, 260 US dollars per month um, on food and drink. Typically, I will do a um, big food shop at the weekend uh, and maybe I'll cook a couple of nights. I eat out a lot as well. I often order food and that's really inexpensive here in Thailand. I'll talk about that in a second. One thing to bear in mind is I do usually get a free meal in the middle of the day when I'm working. So maybe my food is a little bit cheaper because of that. But that being said, I, at the weekend, I do pretty much always like to go to a restaurant at the weekend. So even if I'm saving a bit in the week, I'm always spending it at the weekend as I love food and it's often something I like to do at the weekend to go to a nice restaurant, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think this is probably kind of a reasonable estimation for what you may be spending on food if you're living here, working here. But yeah, just in case you don't know, eating out in Thailand is pretty cheap. Um, yeah, so you can get something like this, Pad Thai for around 60 Thai baht at a sort of cafe or restaurant, that's $1.74 for a meal out. That's pretty amazing, especially if you're coming from like Europe or the UK specifically, <laughs> because you cannot get food that good at that lower price in a cafe or restaurant back there. You can here. That's why I do order food and do eat out quite a lot because it's actually not terribly expensive. Um, so yeah, pretty good. I love the food here and I love the price of the food here. So food and drink. Wi-Fi, um, my Wi-Fi is around 15 US dollars per month. Um, not much more to say about that. Mobile data plan. So mine is actually more expensive than this. This was my previous data plan. I'm not doing my current data plan because the um, cost of the phone, I got a new phone, is included in my package. So I'm paying for the phone as well as a data plan. However, I think you can get a pretty good data plan, or I used to pay. Uh, the SIM only data plan, which was 500 Thai baht per month, which is around 15 US dollars. So I think you can get a pretty 
um, comprehensive data plan for around 15 US dollars that would give you plenty of um, data, minutes, calls, text, all that good stuff. So yeah, I'd expect to pay around that much. That brings our total to 530 US dollars. So that is probably your basic expenses covered around 530 US dollars. So yeah, not bad. There are a few extras I've included that you may need to consider factoring in. Gym membership, probably about 40 US dollars. That's kind of what I used to pay when I was going to a gym. I stopped, I work out at home now. But yeah, that's maybe something you need to do. So maybe you need to consider that and add that to the total. So yeah, also travel. Uh, maybe you live somewhere and there's kind of a decent travel spot nearby, then you're not gonna need that much money. I think you can go for a sort of trip somewhere for about 150 US dollars. If you're just going for a few days and back, transport's pretty cheap out here. Hotels can be pretty cheap out here. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably include that as well, but not every month. So I didn't want to put it on the sort of essentials list, but that's possibly something else you need to consider. All right, so that concludes my video on the cost of living here in Thailand. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it entertaining, perhaps. If you did, consider hitting the like button. I greatly appreciate it. If you're planning to move to Thailand, if you're planning on living out here or anything like that, then maybe subscribe. Also, as I do make a lot of videos, especially now, about living or teaching English, here in Thailand. Let me know in the comment section if you think I missed anything, if you think I overlooked anything, or if your experience is very different to mine, maybe you live in a different area and it's vastly different and you think I'm massively, <laughs> you think I'm massively off the ball when it comes to expenses. But I think that is actually pretty accurate to what I spend out here. So I hope that gives you an idea of what you may be spending out here if you're planning to come and specifically be an English teacher or something like that. I think that would be a reasonable expectation to have of the cost of living if you're living outside of like a major city, major tourist area, outside those areas, then yeah, that's kind of accurate, I believe. And um, that's what my experience has been anyway. But that is everything. Um, so I greatly appreciate you watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And I'll see you in the next one, I hope. Goodbye.